all right gamers welcome to my zeri adc gameplay guide the runes are going to be running fleet footwork triumph legend bloodline cut down conditioning and overgrowth most zeris will run lethal tempo but since the meta at the moment for zeri is to rush static shiv and maybe now after the stormers are buffed potentially storms are first item as well either way both are energizer items they synergize really well with stacking energizer effects so you can have better trades so i strongly recommend fleet footwork So making sure to trade with the passive there. Once the passive is down, like it's only a little bit of damage, but no reason not to hit her with it if I'm trading with her either way. Also want to make sure we use the passive to help us push onto those low HP minions. I'm just gonna start charging my passive again. Just by spamming Q on the air. I don't necessarily want to push though, so. This is something you can do to make sure you get your passive charged up for incoming trades though. Ah. There we go. Oh my god, what is going on with my mouse here? Okay, fairly decent trade there, despite my mouse issues. I'm just gonna wanna make sure we crash this wave into the turret. Now, unfortunately, we're playing blue side Zeri, which is a little bit of a disadvantage compared to red side Zeri. Because... Oh, no, no, wait. Actually, I have this the wrong way around. No, no, no. Actually, no, sorry. We're on blue side Zeri, which is actually advantageous. So we can harass with W from here if we want. We can harass with it through here if they're pushed up. It's a red side Zeri that has the opposite situation going on. Where you have really awkward angles to try and harass with. Because you can't really harass to here from here. And you can't, har pr like, easily harass there from here. Right, so we have a solid HP advantage here. We can try and press our advantage by just going for all ins, maybe. Uh, Samira's typically a little bit scary in lane, but she's only playing with a Senna, doesn't have a support wall in with her. So we shouldn't really be too scared of her. Samira's most scary when she's actually with an engage support who can provide engage for her, give her something to use her passive on. Senna does not do much for Samira. We can just dash into her face now because we can't be punished anymore now that Senna wasted that. That's just a little bit of mana, but every time it's a pretty solid trade. You just have to know that the right tools are down on the enemy side for you to go in like that. Senna wasting her W basically means it can't be hugely punished. While Soraka is almost always going to be able to contribute to a trade. I'm just going to go ahead and base here, I think. Mm. Nah, actually, we don't have to. I'll actually stick around for the Noom Cover. trying to pressure some air here because I can't really easily hit the turret. <coughs> now I could shove this wave in base, but I don't really have amazing wave clear in the early game of Ziri. So we're just going to chill for now and just look for a base in future rather than trying to base immediately. Even if I would have enough gold for noon cover already. Just by shoving this wave. Okay, Noxon is popping top side, so I don't find much value in letting them push this in here. Because they're not going to be in a gankable spot anyway. So I'm going to start thinning this out. I mean, they will be in a gankable spot, but with nobody to gank them, you know, so it's pointless. So we can maybe just look to crash this next wave. If not for getting ganked by Remus, and I missed the cannon, not bad. Doing as much damage there back as I can without taking too much damage for myself. Okay, that's a shame. So, Marco was just a little bit too aggressive there when we had vision, but obviously, we didn't know where Remus was. I need to at least offer some respect there. That's why my focus was entirely on just shoving the wave and not trading at all. So 
So it's very important when you're pushing or thinning out, whatever you're doing, like if you're trying to push a wave as hard as you can, try and save your passive for the low HP minions. So that way it's basically as if you're pushing with two different auto attacks, because without, like using your passive onto none, low HP minions, it barely does any damage at all. But if you lost it all the low HP minions with passive instead of using your auto for them, then it just it reserves your actual auto, you know, your Q. Or the minions that it, you know, it's going to do max damage to any minion, so. You're just going to push a lot more effectively this way. Oop. And I just missed another kind of my bad. We can go for a trade here, though, especially given the fact that... Oh, what the hell? Oh, come on. I should be fine here, even if I get taunted. Oh, did Melt already run out? That's slim. Okay, this could actually be quite good. Oh, no, my bad. Ah, uh, that blows. I was about to use my passive on him. Although, actually, did I not have my passive? Or maybe I just cancelled it. Mm, I was trying to... Considering just trying to get him with my W through this wall, but it didn't get there in time. Okay, this is very annoying. I've been wanting to base for ages. That was a good chance to shove it in and we give Rem's ganked again. Thing is, I don't want to drop multiple waves here. If, if I'm going to have to drop a wave, which it's looking likely that I eventually will have to if I want the base, then I'd rather it be just one small wave rather than like two built up waves. This could be good. Oh. Oh, that locked me down for a bit longer than I would have liked. Should be good, though. Nice one. Now hopefully we can actually finally shove this. Because when your passive is charged, it doesn't really matter too much which you use it on, because it's going to be full damage either way. Okay, there we go. If Senna doesn't freeze that, then we're good. I don't really have the ability to prevent the freeze here. Alright, nice. Perfect. Finally, we get that base off. Otherwise, what I was going to do, which was like the least bad base that I could take, if we didn't get bailed out by the Nocturne, was because they had a slow push going on here, we know that's inevitably going to crash. It's going to be an amalgamation of either two waves or three waves. Then it eventually crashes under turret. We soak as much of that up as we can, as much uh, lost hits, as much XP. And then, afterwards, there's going to be one more wave entering the lane. If that's a cannon wave, I'll stay for that one as well. If it's not a cannon wave, it's just a regular wave. I'll base, and they can crash it and make me miss the CS, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's going to be more valuable for me to actually base and spend my gold than to tr keep trying to stick around to miss as little CS as possible. Because then I'm not going to have my items uh, from my gold, and I'm not going to be able to win fights until I've done that. Sometimes people people, people will just get baited into staying in lane for really long times because they can't find a good time to base that won't make them miss CS. Whereas sometimes it's just worth missing CS just to stay competitive in terms of uh, having your items. Pushing power is much better right now. So is our end fight. Fighting power. Trying to trade with my passive, but I can't get too aggressive onto the Senna. Because of her W. Okay, she's gonna W now. Getting some old bounces there. Yeah, nice. We're doing a lot of damage. They need to just pure disengage whenever I use my ult. Managed to get a okay trade there, I guess. So they did force my ult. I mean, Samira's ult is always going to be up anyway. So it's not like it's bad that we didn't trade ults. Her ult would be up anyway. Actually, we've got to be careful. Okay, we see Brahmas, actually. Don't have to be so careful. Anyway, Zarya, I'm going to be most effective when I am just punishing them when they try to trade with me. That's the thing about Zarya is that because her shots are like projectiles that um, have a trouble speed, your your effective range is a lot higher on opponents who are moving towards you than opponents who are either moving away from you or just like not moving at all. So if Samira wants to walk up the trade with me or Senna wants to walk up the trade with me, then I can fire my Q at them and it either zones them or if they want to walk up the trade, they're going to get hit by it. In that sense, like, basically, I'm gonna outscale almost any bot lane, especially with my support being Soraka this game. 
All I really have to do is just decentivize them from, from even trading with me. I don't have to, like, go out of my way to play super aggressively. It's just nice, obviously, if you do have a lead and you can make use of that. I was hoping she'd try and trade back there. Okay, we get the passive on someone. Okay, that's fine. We trade back while also juking around, making sure we're not going to be... A free hit for her W. So Mirror Q also work, obviously works in a similar way to the Zeri Q. In terms of uh, being more effective at hitting people who are chasing after you than running away from you, but it's on a much higher cooldown. Look at that, Sona walks up, she's gonna get hit a ton. The only way to avoid it is to not trade. But I'm also taking Time Bomb. I massively have skill both of these guys. It's almost Soraka for that matter. Alright, if I shove this one wave, then I can base for Static Shiv. Let's get out of here. Oh. Have no vision. That's a shame. Oop. Okay, that was a close one. I should be okay. Yep, I'm fine. Nice one. What's the wave state like? Looks about even. Gonna have to base here. Yeah, I'm suddenly gonna mess with it, so it's actually gonna be a favorable wave state for me. Uh, let's see. I don't really want to pick up anything yet. I guess I'll do a pink. It's a bit late to be buying. Refillable. Uh, hang on. I forgot to do this. I usually would not turn back for this, but just to show you guys, since it is a Zeri guide, this is a trick you can do to just get out of base a little bit faster every time. It costs you a little bit of mana, but you will, re you will regen some of it just by virtue of starting this on the fountain as well. You can do it on blue side as well, right about here. Um, obviously, don't try to do it with smart cast unless you know the exact placement. You have to have a lot of experience and a lot of testing and practice tool to know the exact placement every time. I do not bother with that. It's not that important. You can just click the ability even if you don't have a binding for the regular cost. So you can see exactly where the thing would take you. Just gonna shove this in. Shoving this in also gives me a chance to play some vision, which is my main purpose for shoving that. Also, actually, so Samira's mid at the moment. Um, Soraka's placing vision without me anyway, I'm just gonna start hitting the turret. If Sana walks up to try and force me off this turret, I'm gonna trade back. Nice. Yeah, so Stormers are might be viable on Zeri again after the change. Uh, where it has plus 5 AD now. Most people are still using Static Shiv on 13.18. That's where we're going to be continuing to run in this video. It's very good on Zeri because of... Um, it, it gives her Wave Clear that isn't dependent on her using her E. Which is very good because it's very risky to use her high cooldown E for just for Wave Clear. There we go. So I don't really want to dash in there because I don't have enough information right now. I don't know where Ramos is. Exactly, there he is. If I wasted my E, I could be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I'm gonna have to leave here. Alright, we can start rotating towards Metagas. Nice one. I don't really want to be using my Q on Ramos here because I'm going to be taking so much damage. Oh, hello. Can you use ult here? Oh, I might be dead here. Okay. I got a bit lucky, I guess. We're going to continue using Q on the minions. I don't even want to hit Ramos if I can avoid it because... Ooh. Yeah, he does a lot of damage with that W. Thank you, Soraka. I was sure I was going to die there. Place a ward there, okay. I think they're basing anyway and Soraka's just healed me up. So I can probably just walk up here and start pushing. If they've based, then this should be a free turret for me. Except for the potential... Pantheon, what I was gonna say. Uh, does this guy not intend to pick this up? 
Fair enough. Can't say I've never made that mistake myself. Um. Oh, Lily's their top laner. Okay, Vex is going bot, so that means the only undefended lane at the moment is top. I'm gonna just head over top and see if I can get this. If Lily shows up, then I might just place my Herald. I got an easy skip through this wall. I need it. Okay, I don't think I'm going to be able to walk up and pressure that, so... I'll place that, and that should be an easy turret without me having to overstay for it. Don't need to stick around for it. I'm going to get the gold either way. No. There's vision there. I'm just going to jump this wall. She's probably going to be able to get this turret back. There's not much I can do about that. I can't get baited into permanently staying here. Uh, I'll probably... Nah, I can go mid. So Vex is too low, she's not gonna go back to mid lane here. Means mid lane is not currently being farmed by anybody else. I can go mid, get this farm. Also try and get this turret down as well. I'm not gonna bother rotating for whatever's happening here, because there's no guarantee of there actually being a fight. But there's a lot of guarantee of gold here. There's a fight going on right now. I might be able to rotate there and actually influence the fight. Or, I can just take this guaranteed turret, which is guaranteed 300 gold. Now we can consider rotating over, because there's nothing better to get on mid lane. Looks like the fight is over, though. That's fine. Nice one. Okay, I gotta be a little bit careful here, though. I'm gonna back off, because I don't know where Remus is. I'll try and clear this, though. A little bit risky. I could get collapsed if Remus is behind me. Okay, we see Remus. Got really good CS per minute this game. Static shift helps a lot with that. In the mid game, it also becomes less and less important to maximize the usage of your passive on the low HP minions because it becomes harder to predict when they're going to be low HP anyway, with the inconsistency of crits. And either way, it's like a, a lot less damage than your autos already do anyway. Ooh, I don't know whether to help there. I'll. Right, fuck. Fuck it. Ooh. I need to get out of here. Alright, my bad. Whoa, what the hell? Where did she come from? Damn. Is that a big shot down? Not a huge one. Not too bad. Yeah, so I'm not- I don't, Obviously, Barra's a new champion. I'm not entirely sure, like, how long she can survive this kind of fight. <laughs> Decided to just risk it. She ended up dying. She survived for, like, longer than I expected, but it did end up getting burst down. I obviously wasn't doing much damage either. A big part of Zeri is just her safety and flipperiness, stickiness. You don't necessarily, like, massively outdamage other ADCs in terms of DPS. At least until late game. Um, could I sell this? I think it was worth waiting 25 gold. We'll just sell the coal and pick up Navori. Navori is also going to make me a lot safer. Your options for a second item are basically either Navori or Infinity Edge. Also, potentially Phantom Dance for a second item has a really good win rate. But uh, we'll just take the Wusk Conventional, which is either Navori or Infinity Edge. Navori does the least damage, but makes you have a really low cooldown on E. Which makes you a lot safer, makes it a lot easier to deal damage in like unsafe situations. We're going to go bot, because uh, Sermon is pushing this in. Uh, whereas Infinity Edge just straight up does the most damage by far. So it depends what you want. In a game like this where I'm facing Ramus, arguably, maybe I could have done better with Infinity Edge. Hard to say, we'll see. It's also good to have, um, like, lower dashes, though, against something like Lilia. And even against Ramus, I guess. Since he is going to be chasing us down a lot. Okay, there we go. We got that farm. Because I'm Zarian, I'm pretty safe. I can risk pathing through the river. And I was gonna do the Scuttle Crab, but I can also just... Hang on. Come on. There we go. Damn it, I'm sad that I was forced to dash out there because of Samira appearing. The ultimate felt a little bit wasted there, but... I managed to finish off the Pantheon. Samira got, ended up getting taken down.
Nice one. Worth noting that Zeri's Q does not count as an ability, so <laughs> Navori is not increasing the, the damage of Q, but it does increase the damage of your passive, which is, you know, like your actual right click. I'm gonna stick around for another wave because Vex isn't, so somebody may as well get this. If we don't, then at least three minions are gonna die. Three melees are gonna die to no one in particular. Since I have Navori, it's not as risky as me. Risky for me now to actually use my E to farm. You can see by the time I finish farming that wave, I'm already on 3 second cooldown on E. As opposed to, like, 12 second cooldown on E. It's a huge difference. Uh, no, this is not what I want. I want to do Phantom Dancer now. It's going to make our kiting even more effective. It's not going to be the most damage possible on the Remus. We absolutely need to do Lord Dominic's fourth item at the very least. If their team was a lot tankier, I would justify Lord Dominic's third. But I don't really want to do it here. Oh, and we also have the choice of doing Runan's uh, third item. That is actually the more popular choice, but I think Phantom Dancer is just straight up better. At least until late game, um, until like very late game. I think Runan's probably skills better. But Phantom Dancer just gives you a whole lot more movement speed, which is basically what Zeri is all about. Go ahead and use my E here. We'll shove the wave first, and then we consider rotating. Our biggest priority is make sure we're keeping up our farm. It blows up, I'll take this. Okay, he's used his stun, we can just go on him. Got him. Oop. Looks like I'm fine. Slowly losing all of my HP to this Ramus. Okay, his thing is out. Now I can keep on not attacking him. But I gotta be careful here. Okay, thank God for the low cooldown of our E. Nice. There you have it. That's why we build Novori. This makes you so much slipperier. If that's a thing. Oh. Probably that here. Not bad. She's gonna die as well. Surely? Ooh, nice one. And Nocturne doesn't even die. Well done, Soraka. Yeah, Ramos is a bit awkward to be dealing with as an ADC. Unfortunately, a lot of the time, he's basically just a zoning tool. His W deals... Well, W paired with Thornmail at least deals so much damage to you. You can't even afford to hit him a lot of the time. Like, it feels bad not to hit him. So a lot of the time you will, but you'll notice yourself quickly dropping to 50% HP, 20% HP... Like, a lot of the time, when he's got his W up, especially if you're already lacking HP from a previous fight, you just have to ignore him. And if he's the only thing you could even possibly hit, well, you're just getting zoned from the fight for a while, is basically what it is. A lot of the time, you will do more harm to yourself by trying to be useful by damaging him than you would be just by ignoring him. I'm gonna go bot, because I think there's gonna be a wave there. Okay, there's gonna be something to farm at least. Oh, hello, Remus. He's got his W up. I'm just gonna ignore him, because we're not even in the middle of a team fight. Alright, should be running out now. Oh, what the hell? I was trying to block that. You're kidding me. Okay, nice. I'm half HP just to the Remus W and Thornmail. Okay, nice. That worked out. Ramos kind of needed to be leaving there. So long as I ignore him, like I said, uh, we just wait out the W and then he's kind of useless and he's just a sitting duck for me. Even failing to block his E, I still, or his Q rather, I still managed to catch up to him there. Gets a little bit better once we build Lord Dominic still, because at least then, the, like, um... Uh, damage dealt to Remus compared to damage dealt to us ratio gets a little bit more in our favor because we're dealing more damage to him rather than dealing zero damage. But, you know, he can still really quickly take you out just by your, just through your own auto attack, so you still gotta watch out for it. There's a certain threshold of damage that is okay to take, but once you've crossed it, you just really have to, like, start 
like preserving your HP. Okay, I'm getting flanked here. Alright, we're fine. Gonna go ahead and base now. I think I only did that wall jump, by the way, once this game, didn't I? But you can do it pretty much any time you're leaving base, as long as your E is up. It might actually be down sometimes if you used your E before basing, because it has such a long cooldown in the early game. It should be a good fight. Pretty much one shot her. Um, maybe my was a bit overkill here, I'm gonna flash over so I can still do something with it. Oh, didn't E through the wall, my bad. <laughs> Alright, and that's going to be it for Missouri God. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more content like this. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Later, gamers.